Okay, first thing out of the gate is this isn't about your or my interpretation of the Second Amendment. I learned how to use guns when I was a kid, I've taught shooting sports, but we're not really going to get into that here. This is more about how a group of lobbyists to control the NRA have more power than you, me, or even entire states. And I think one thing we can all agree on is that corporate lobbyists kind of suck. Yes, the NRA may have just declared bankruptcy, but that doesn't mean it's going away anytime soon. Most people's idea of the NRA is that it's a non-profit group of gun owners who advocate to protect their rights. That's only half true. 98 million Americans own a gun, yet only 5 million are registered with the NRA. Of that, about 7% vote for the NRA's leadership. If you're keeping score at home, the voice of America's gun owner only speaks for about 0.35%. Less than half their budget comes from membership dues. 95 million comes from contributions, mostly from the firearms industry. They also receive tens of millions in advertising revenue and royalties from the firearms industry. And the 48% that does come from membership dues, while an unknown amount of those membership dues come from gun purchases that include a free NRA membership paid for by the firearms industry. So today's NRA only represents a small fraction of gun owners, is heavily funded by the firearms industry, and has been controlled by lobbyists for nearly half a century. To understand how we got here, we have to go back. The NRA was founded in 1871 with the goal to promote and encourage rifle shooting on a scientific basis, which seems pretty reasonable. Until the 1970s, they were apolitical. They supported the Federal Firearms Act of 1938, requiring licenses for gun manufacturers and preventing sales to felons. They also supported the Gun Control Act of 1968, which regulated the sale of machine guns, silencers, grenades, missiles, and chemical weapons. However, this started a rift between the average gun owner and lunatics who thought they were losing their constitutional right to missiles and chemical weapons. This culminated in a coup in 1977, where NRA leadership was overthrown by Neil Knox, the editor of Gun Week, Handloader, and Rifle magazines, and Harlan Carter, a lobbyist convicted murderer and former head of the U.S. Border Patrol. We'll get back to those two in a second. Anyways, fast forward 40 plus years of control by lobbyists, and you get the mess we're in today. The current NRA is actually an organization with six distinct subsidiaries, some of which operate like financial shell corporations, funneling money from firearms manufacturers and foreign entities to politicians, marketing agencies, and lawyers. The unwritten goal, eliminating firearms regulations to increase sales, regardless of who is buying them. Firearms are currently a $28 billion a year industry in the US. A huge chunk of that comes from the black market, which is estimated to be anywhere from six to $12 billion. These are guns that end up in the hands of criminals, cartels, warlords, and terrorists in the US and abroad. Of course, firearms manufacturers aren't directly making these transactions, but they sure as shit are selling it to the people who do. And less regulations makes that easier. Think of it like a creepy person hanging outside of a liquor store who buys alcohol for underage kids. And the NRA is like someone who's actively trying to make this easier to make some dough. But instead of kids and booze, it's guns and terrorists with $12 billion a year being exchanged. This is where the NRA's biggest contributors are not gun owners, but companies like Beretta, Benelli, Midway USA, Pierce, and Springfield Armory. So how the fuck did we end up here? Well, you remember our magazine editor friend, Neil Knox? In the 1970s, he would flood his magazines with articles pushing for less regulation, which made gun manufacturers more inclined to put ads in his magazines. When he took over lobbying at the NRA, Knox applied this business model to the whole organization, expanding its lobbying wing and involvement with firearms manufacturers. This has only grown over the decades. Now, if you still don't believe that the NRA is fully in bed with the firearms industry, let me introduce you to tagants, little microscopic particles that can be added to powder propellants, which are used in some firearms. Tagants act like fingerprints, so when gunpowder ignites, tagants scatter and have a unique signature that link back to things like their batch or point of sale. An easy way to trace misuse of an explosive chemical. But people aren't robbing banks with black powder rifles, and they only make up a small portion of gun sales, so what's the point? Well, powder propellants are also the go-to choice for bombs used by terrorists, like the World Trade Center bombing in 93, the Atlanta Olympics in 96, Boston Marathon in 2013, and every single bomb made by the Unabomber for 17 straight years. Some experts are even speculating powder propellants were used in the Nashville bombing on Christmas. Tagants are currently used in other countries and were proposed by the DOJ in 1980, but the NRA successfully lobbied against them. 
Tagins would be an added cost to gunpowder manufacturers and decrease sales from people making recreational explosives. I guess I must have missed the part where making explosives less traceable falls under the NRA's mission of promoting and encouraging rifle shooting on a scientific basis. Neil Knox at the time also happened to own stock in one of the country's biggest powder manufacturers run by his long-term friend. So who currently calls the shots at the NRA? Well, it's the NRA's board made up of 76 members, many of which are competitive shooters and hunters. But the board is also crammed with lobbyists, politicians, lawyers, firearms executives, and celebrities. These have included gems like Tom Selleck, Larry Craig, Oliver North, Carl Malone, Lee Emery, and Ted Nugent. People that have more political influence than you or I will ever have simply for the fact that they're famous and own a gun. NRA members vote for this board, however our options are self-selected by a 10-person nomination committee made up by members of the same board. So basically the corporate lobbyist version of a circle jerk. This is by design. The NRA doesn't want gun owners involved. They want the firearms industry calling the shots. Why? Because the NRA is run like a corporation, despite technically being a 501c nonprofit charity. And because they're a charity, they pay no taxes, yet are the lobbying and marketing epicenter for the firearms industry. And like any good corporation, I'm sorry, charity, they have an overpaid CEO, Wayne Robert LaPierre Jr. A career lobbyist, LaPierre has been chief executive of the NRA since 1991. LaPierre's rhetoric has become so unhinged he at one point called dead U.S. service members Nazis, which caused one American president to rip up his membership card. No, not that one. Or that one either. Or that one. There we go. Avid Hunter, war hero, RNC chairman, and Republican president George H.W. Bush. So of course running a charity, LaPierre's pay is reasonable. Who are we kidding? There's, there's nothing good about this. In 2015, LaPierre took home a little over a million dollars in salary. He also got a $70,000 check toward payments on a mansion he never purchased and a $500,000 per diem for clothing and travel. That sounds like a lot for someone running a charity funded by members' donations. Well, it is, but that's only 25% of what he made because he also received a $3.7 million special early retirement plan, bringing his take home total that year to a little over $5 million. And when he finally does retire, he has a $17 million post employment contract with the NRA that he wrote for himself. Fun side note in 2011, LaPierre and his wife were accused of suppressing footage of them hunting an elephant in Botswana for a reality TV show. Allegedly, the footage showed them sitting on a dead elephant and his wife holding the severed tail in the air shouting, Victory. Now I've shot clay pigeons before and even hit a deer with a flu flu arrow to scare it off a range. Maybe I'm not a stupid fucking millionaire lobbyist, but I cannot for the life of me comprehend someone getting excited about shooting an animal the size of a school bus from close range with a 30 got 6 Honestly, I would be more impressed if they missed. Of course, leadership at the NRA isn't just corrupt, it's also super fucking racist. Only 9% of the board is made up of minorities, which is not even close to being representative of gun owners. When African American groups started exercising their right to bear arms in the 70s, the NRA flipped around and suddenly backed gun restrictions. Since then, they've been noticeably quiet when representing gun rights for minorities. Also, if we rewind back to Harlan Carter, you remember the guy who ran the NRA after that coup in 1977? Well, before the NRA, he was in charge of the Border Patrol, where he led Operation Wetback actual name that saw border patrol agents raid homes of over a million Mexican immigrants and deport them, many of which were US citizens or even here legally. Oh, and that little murder he committed? Well, Harlan covered that up for nearly half a century and the victim was a 15 year old Hispanic kid. This is where I'd want to end my rant and say that everything is salvageable and the NRA could go back to its roots as an organization that represents the rights of gun owners and not corporate lobbyists. But if you look at the little red bar right there, that's not happening yet. Because this is where things go from a dumpster fire to a full-blown convention of dumpsters on fire. Like if dumpster fires had their own Comic-Con. That's the status of the NRA right now. In 2011, the NRA gained two very interesting members who ingrained themselves in the organization's leadership. Alexander Pulfrey Everidge Torshin and Maria Valerievna Butina which might seem weird considering Torshin is a leading figure in the Russian Mafia and Butina was an unregistered foreign agent. The two became heavily involved with the NRA and used their connections to set up a meeting in Moscow between an NRA delegation and the Deputy Prime Minister of Russia, a meeting which they claimed was non-political. This is 
the deputy prime minister of Russia meeting with a delegation from the NRA in Moscow, and they say it's not political. Dude, like, what? <laughs> so they just flew halfway around the world to chat about nesting dolls? Anyways, just completely by coincidence, I assume, the next year Russia laundered tens of millions of dollars through the NRA to US politicians. Bettina was arrested by the FBI and pled guilty while Torshin's assets were frozen and he was barred entry into the United States. Which brings us to now. On top of being declared a foreign asset by the US government and being plagued by infighting, there's now action being taken against the NRA by the state of New York to disband the entire organization due to fraud. Despite getting hundreds of millions in donations, the NRA is running a deficit. After an 18-month investigation, the Attorney General of New York State found NRA executives misused charitable funds for personal gain and awarded contracts to friends, family, and former employees to ensure loyalty. All these issues caused the NRA to just flat out declare bankruptcy, the goal of which is to avoid their legal issues while reincorporating in Texas. Quick reminder here, the NRA still claims to be a charity. 98 million Americans own a gun, but only 5 million of those are registered with the NRA, and we don't even know that for sure. That's their number. So, if you're still a member of the NRA, get out. This, this organization doesn't care about you, or your views, or represent you, and only really wants your money. The safest place you could be with Wayne and a gun back then was in a different state, because he really did not know anything about guns. Politics, yes. Guns, no. Thank you for watching. Um, I really want to apologize if my tone got out of hand or my anger overcame me during parts of this video. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. If you didn't, I really appreciate that you watched it all the way through.